World War II is a scar upon human race forever. World War II is supposed to have taken the lives of anywhere between eleven to twelve million people. More than two hundred political prisoners were burned to death. Uh, it is not about who did it. We as human beings, that's what we do, unfortunately, till now. But what we are looking at is not going to come in the form of bombs. There's no bang-bang happening here, this happens quietly. Every responsible scientist in the world is saying by 2045, we'll be producing forty percent less food on the planet and our population will be 9.2 billion people. If it goes this way, World War II <laughs> will look like a small blimp because if forty percent less food means it's estimated in six months about 1.5 to 1.7 billion people can die. Climate change, food security, nutrition security, water quality, water renewability, biodiversity, land grab, political stability. Human health, well-being, peace, prosperity, soil is the basic of all that. Soil is a basic uh, entity on which all terrestrial life depends. Ninety-five percent of all the food which is consumed by human comes from soil. As much as uh, ninety-five percent of all antibiotics taken by human and animal come from soil. So soil and life have evolved together. There is no soil without life, and there is no life without soil. In a handful of soil, there are over five to seven billion organisms. And just like how our body functions, the food that we eat, actually we cannot digest all by ourselves. We don't have the necessary enzymes and alkalines to digest this completely. Only because of the microbial gut microbes that are there, we digest food. The same is true with all the plants and trees. They cannot take the nutrients from the soil by themselves. They need the help of the microorganisms. Good guy bacteria, um, good guy fungi, protozoa, Nematodes, microarthropods, earthworms, Inca triads, all of those organisms are required to have a good healthy soil so your plant gets the balance of everything that it needs every second of every day. The first 15 inches, 12 to 15 inches of soil is responsible for 87% of the life on the planet including you and me. And that, today we are using machines where they're plowing almost like twelve to fourteen inches deep and leaving it open to the sun. This is like we peel off our skin and stand in the sun, you know? You will be screaming. That's exactly what the land is doing. Land is screaming, but nobody's hearing. Just plowed and left open, killing all the microbial activity. See, right now, the organisms here, the only food they can eat is organic content. 
where will the organic content come from? Here you see all these leaves, dry leaves falling down. We won't pick it up nor sweep it away. We leave it like that, it'll become part of the soil. It is only the green litter from the trees and other, whether it's a grass or bushes, whatever, or the animal waste, which can put organic content into the soil. In normal agricultural soil, the minimum organic content should be between three to six percent. The most minimum is three percent. Three percent is… is kind of the… the borderline, where you've got enough diversity in the kinds of foods that are present so that all of the necessary sets of microorganisms will be able to perform their jobs. In most of the Western world, we have so destroyed sets of species of different functional groups that we're on the edge of not being able to come back from that. Over 62% of India's soil has organic content less than 0.5%. Entire southern Europe, the soil organic content is just around one percent or below. Over fifty percent of the topsoil in whole of United States is gone. You heard of dinosaurs going ex extinct, dodos going extinct, but this is a question of soil extinction. See, this is… this is sand. If you add enough organic content into this, this will become rich soil. Similarly, if you take all the organic content out of the soil, it will become sand. So this is called as desertification in the world. World's agricultural soils are becoming sand or turning into a desert largely across the world because there is no organic content. Right now, the soil that we are using is not our generation's soil. We are using up the soil of the unborn child. We have no business to do that because soil is not our property, it's a legacy that's come to us and it's a legacy that we should leave behind, living soil. Because once there is no richness in soil, there is no way there is richness in life. Right now, United Nations statistics say that we may have agricultural soil only for another eighty to hundred crops. This means it is a matter of forty to fifty years after that, there could be severe food shortages and getting rich organic land or soil <laughs> will become the basis of battles and wars on this planet. People talk about the weapon of mass disruption, nuclear bombs and missiles and other things. Yes, what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki is unforgivable. Yes, we forget one of the biggest weapon of mass destruction is hunger. Malnutrition, poverty, unavailability of healthy environment. Even now, Hunger-related death in the world are 16 to 17 every minute. That, my friend, is the weapon of mass destruction. Now, we had in December 2019, we had 690 million people globally which were hungry. Out of that, 40 million were in the United States. So, every it's not just Tambaktu or some part in India or elsewhere. 
ഇവിടെ തിരുവ I was talking to uh, the WFP uh, director who is uh, from United States. He said that by 2035 there could be severe famines in Chicago and Illinois region because the soil conditions have depleted so badly it can easily happen. Civil wars are expected by 2035-2040 they're expecting many many civil wars within countries because not everybody in a given country will have food so naturally there will be fights if 40% less food in india means 40% of the people don't have food you think they'll just get hungry and sit in a corner no they will do things that you can't imagine you must understand whole human civilizations have been built only because of the fire of the belly to fulfill this the same fire which built human civilizations can burn the damn thing down if it is not quenched do not underestimate that since 1990 there have been around 30 wars in africa 27 of these wars were fought for the sake of acquiring fertile soil the great revolutions of the world the russian bolshevik revolution of 1917 was mainly for bread even their slogan is peace land and bread that is the slogan of the russian revolution food scarcity is in france were the main trigger for the french revolution what happened in china you know the so called cultural revolution is also because of repeated famines across the country and once there is no bread on the street it's easy to light the fuse if you want peace everybody must have bread roti food there is no peace if there is no food it's simple as that soil is a most neglected part of the human environment Degrading soils means losing and wasting potential food today and forever. A human being like other animals are requiring a fairly complex diet and um, many nutrients. And these nutrients we get through our food and that essentially depend on the soils. Uh, so the soils rich in nutrients in minerals um, are um, uh, a precondition for a healthy diet there's a direct link uh, between soil quality in terms of nutrients and uh, diet quality in terms of what uh, what we eat so that is not well understood by many people you have to put into the soil nutrients nitrogen phosphorus potassium micronutrient calcium magnesium potassium organic matter uh, content which is mineral iron take it must be returned back to the soil in one form or the other for soil to be productive soil produces straw grains roots i believe that if people take the grains and they turn the roots and straw back to the soil so that soil gets its share of production that's a good thing if you take away the straw then soil does not get anything so progressively soil is being degraded depleted devoid of the essential elements that is when we call degradation of soil health and when soil is degraded people living on it are also become progressively miserable
The soil depletion in United States has led to twenty-one percent drop in vitamin A in all the fruits, vegetables and everything else that you're eating. Thirty percent drop in vitamin C, thirty-seven percent drop in iron levels, twenty-seven percent drop in calcium levels. The things that uh, today you all think is very healthy to eat salads and stuff, from the early twentieth century, what level of nutrients they had and what they have today is only ten percent left, ninety percent lower than what it was in early twentieth century. Uh, Center for uh, Disease Control, which is right now playing a significant role in this COVID situation, says all Americans are potassium deficient. Ninety percent of the Americans have vitamin E deficiency. Seventy percent have vitamin K deficiency. Fifty-two percent don't have enough magnesium. Forty-three percent don't have enough vitamin A. Forty percent don't have enough vitamin C. This is in the most affluent nation. It simply means the food that you're eating doesn't have enough nutrients, even if you eat enough food, because soil has been destroyed like this. One serious problem that the world is facing right now is, by 2030, it is expected 1.6 billion people will migrate. Out of this, 0.9 billion will come from Africa. See, when people migrate in an unplanned way, what they go through is unbelievable. Especially women and children, mm -hmm. what they go through in unplanned migration where they're being dragged through, all kinds of unfamiliar terrain, what happens to them is unbelievable. Nobody should face this. All young women like between 14 to 18 years of age, they are being seriously exploited. It is expected that in India, about 220 million people will move to urban centers in the next eight to ten years' time. Tell me in your city, do you have place for another twenty, thirty million people extra? This will happen in a big way across the world. Yes, there are soil refugees. Yes, there are climate refugees. Yes, there are drought refugees. And those refugees uh, go and knock door of other people. The U.S. southern border is a very good example. People jumping into the Mediterranean without realizing whether they'll make it on the other side or not is a very good example. And there are several millions of refugees in the world because the land which they grew up on cannot afford their services, their basic needs. Eventually, the solution lies to make sure that the soil can support them. There's a very strong link between uh, soil degradation and global issues. For example, uh, climate change. So, current civilization, I call it carbon civilization. Everything we do is based on carbon, also fuel-based carbon. And therefore, we have depleted also carbon, not only from fossil fuel, but also from soil. Maximum amount of carbon was always in the soil, but now, a lot of it is in the atmosphere, where it should not be. If it gets into the atmosphere, as you've heard of global warming and climate change, all these impacts happen. But nearly forty percent of this is happening simply because soil is left open. For this, the main contributor is agriculture or open lands, 
the same soil which would have taken carbon dioxide and methane from the atmosphere is now releasing it simply because we are leaving it open and there is no life or microbial activity. When the global mean temperature goes from zero to one, that's a big thing. Go from one to two, it's a massive thing. Go beyond two, you're in a disaster zone. We are now on our way uh, to a warming of three degrees Celsius. And we're doing it in a blink of time. I mean, it's, it's just this extraordinary exponential rise of temperature on Earth. If you can take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through plants and put it back to the soil and keep it there, then we deplete the carbon from the atmosphere and make global warming lesser serious problem. Uh, the Brazilian part of the Amazon rainforest has, according to the latest science, tipped over from being a carbon sink for thousands of years one of the most important carbon sinks on planet Earth, to now being a carbon source. So it has already tipped over and is releasing more carbon than it's taking up. So, so soil has become, you know, if, if anything, even more important, even existential. See, the whole life process on this planet is carbon-based. So, the same goes for a blade of grass, the same goes for the coconut tree, the same goes for every other creature on this planet, essentially carbon. Where is all this carbon coming from? The great miracle on the planet in the process of evolution of creation on this planet is photosynthesis. Uh, a limitless amount of energy coming there from the sun, using that, the atmospheric carbon is absorbed and it goes through a whole series of process through millions of uh, microbial life and gets stored in the soil. What gets stored in this way, going through three to four cycles of microbes, this gets stored up to thousand years minimum. we've become a geological force of change. We are at risk of destabilizing not only, you know, local ecosystems and local life, con living conditions, but the entire planet. United Nations says we only have 60 years of agricultural soil left. So within fifty years' time, there will be a serious food crisis on the planet. A mass famine would be inevitable. You know, I know people always say, you know, we only have six, sixty more years of agriculture to go. Yeah, but that was ten years ago that we, we made that statement. We're at fifty, guys. Soil is a living entity. It has a lot of organisms. And when those organisms are killed, soil is no longer healthy. Soil is no longer living. Soil cannot create the ecosystem services. When soil dies, everything else dies with it, including us. If we start correcting it now, in fifteen to twenty-five years, we can make a reasonable level of correction. We can come away from the brink where we are. But if you leave it for another thirty to forty years and then try to do it, it will take hundred and fifty to two hundred years to regenerate the soil. So this is not about just painting a… this is not about just painting a dark picture of everything. This is a moment of responsibility that we as human beings, if you stand up right now, we can turn this around. Soils 
is the very basis for biology and human life. But we also know that we cannot destroy nature to, to feed humanity because that will threaten the stability of the planet, which means the life support for humans and all species on Earth. So we now need to be caretakers of soil. Uh, the cost of um, um, action is much lower than the cost of inaction, um, uh, dealing with uh, soil and land degradation. But um, it's not something which the individual farmers can do. It has to have a large a regional, if not global, initiative. This depletion of soil has happened because we have not put back the organic content back into the soil of what we are taking out. So we are seeing how to get a policy in 192 countries uh, to make this the norm that if you own agricultural land, minimum three to six percent organic content must be there by law. Initially by recommendation, then by incentives, and then by law, by mandatory law, it has to happen. If it's not in the law, then we don't know what they will do tomorrow. That's what we have done, isn't it? From pre previous generation to this generation, in one generation we've ruined it because there was no law. If there was a law, minimum agriculture content should be… Uh, organic content should be there in it, we would have kept it that way. So first and foremost thing is to bring the law, to bring the law what is needed. This is a democracy. That means people are the power, it's people's power, that's what it means. So there are two very powerful things in your hands right now. One is your vote, another is your microphone. Hello? That means your voice. So this is important, the people of the world have to speak and say, we are ready for long-term solutions, we are ready for long-term commitment, we are ready for a long haul, we are willing to pay the price for the well-being of future generations. This is why the Save Soil movement is not about action, but it's about bringing policy change. As a part of this, <laughs> I'm 65 and I'm riding 30,000 kilometers across 24 nations to activate support from the citizenry. We are trying to get about 3 to 3.5 billion people to speak about soil for these 100 days. From March 21st, 100 days, we want the whole world to talk about soil. We have UNCCD as our partner. We have also signed something with the World Food Program. And the scientists from FAO and other organizations are working with us. World Economic Forum is very much with us. Most governments have come on board. Uh, heads of states will be flagging off this rally. Right now, that's what I'm trying to create, that if 3.5 billion people speak, this is 60% of the electorate. If 60% of the electorate speaks, there is no government which will ignore that in a democratically set up government. Each one of you should reach as many people as you can to make this happen. Many global leaders and influencers are already participating in the movement. Be a part of this and let us make it happen. From my part, uh, as much as I can contribute. And the movement that you are taken up, I could not expect any more God's blessing than that. Sadhguru, and this campaign is so important. We are going to save the soil. Do your part. And saving the soils. And our planet's future depend on it. Sadhguru, <laughs> save soil, my friend. Save soil, let's make it happen. The Imbabula is part of the Save Soil mission. Thank you. What you're doing. That is why we are happy to sign the MOU. The science and philosophy that backs the thought behind the movement is tremendous. Save soil. 
Let's make it happen. Save the soil. We know what we must do. So let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make this happen. Let us make it happen. Let's 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 make it happen.